<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Nisrug Kadam and before we get started with today's video, I would like to thank you all for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Kindly press the bell button so that you get updates and notifications of each and every video that I upload on the weekly basis. So I have been uploading videos recently very late, <clears throat> but I will promise that I will upload at least two videos per week so that you know we can keep the traction up and we can learn all the new things that I want to share with you. So without wasting time, let us jump on our today's topic. And the today's topic is going to be regarding UiPath Orchestrator Q. Now I have been getting a lot of questions on how to run two robots parallelly on a single queue and how does that exactly functions? So the answer is it's very simple. Now, before wasting time, let me give you a quick recap of what I have built in my UiPath workflow. So this is the similar workflow of UiPath RE Orchestrator queue. If you want to watch how I built this workflow, go to my YouTube channel, click on the playlist. In the playlist, click on RE Framework UiPath videos, which is the RE Framework UiPath playlist. And in that, there is this third video, which is build RE Framework with Orchestrator queue in 30 minutes. Watch this entire video. I will also make sure to post the link of this video in the comment section below and in the, uh, in the description of this video. So you can watch this video. So watch this entire video to build this board with me. Now, what happens here? So I have two machines right now with me in front of me. So one of the machine is this second machine. I will show you in sec in two to three minutes. Okay. So in this machine, I have created a RE framework where initially I'm using a dispatcher. Dispatcher will upload my data, which is my input data. Now let me show you the input data. So this is the data set. Okay. In this data set, we have 20 rows. Now 20 rows means 20 transactions. Correct. So I'm going to upload all this data in orchestrator queue, which is, let me navigate to UI path orchestrator. This is my orchestrator and this is the queue section of my orchestrator. So this is the queue name, which is demo queue. Right now you can see this queue is completely empty. Okay. Now in order to upload it, I will use a workflow called as dispatcher in which I will simply read the range from the Excel read in that data table and pass that data table using bulk add queue item activities in my queue name right now this bulk add queue item activities is very helpful with this only two activities you can actually upload your entire data from excel to orchestrator queue okay now once we add the data once we run the dispatcher so let's run the dispatcher once so let's see run file as soon as i run file let's see what happens you see run file took only one second to execute within one second let's navigate to uipath orchestrator Refresh this page and let's go inside demo queue. Look at the transactions. So there are in total 20 transactions. As you can see, there are 10 visible here and 10 on the next page. Correct. Now, if you open any one of them, you can see the details such as cash in on a check and not on a check. So you can see all the transactions have been uploaded here where all the transaction status are is new. Correct is because this is recently uploaded to orchestrator queue. Now, how can we make sure that uh, this RE framework is using Q? So I have used uh, Q here. So for using Q, you do not have to do any changes in your existing RE framework. You simply have to write your workflow according to that. What I have done is in init all applications, I have opened the UI demo application. Now, once I open the UI demo application, you know, right? So let me go to the project folder location. Let's go to data input. This is the UI demo. So in this application, I am going to enter all these details, which is cash in on a stick and not on a stick from this Excel file, which we had, right? And then once we enter all the data, we click on accept. So that is the entire workflow. Now in the initialize applications, I'm opening the UI demo application. That's it. I'm just opening it and then logging in with the credentials. Okay. And once I open a login with the credentials, in the process transaction, what I'm trying to do here is if you see this process.xml in the process.xml workflow inside this, come here in the attached window, you see I'm typing in uh, all the three values, cash in, okay, then honest check, not honest check. And then at the end, I am fetching two values from there, which is uh, the account number and the uh, anchor base value, right? And then clicking on push button, accept accept it and logging the message 
storing the account number and the transaction number, which also will reflect in UiPath Orchestrator. Okay, so that is what we want when we run the process. Now, the once process is executed, once everything is completed, in the end we will go ahead and we will close all applications with the attachment the UI demo you can see here. So we will close the window. That's it. Now I have simply commented the part of uh, sending an email is because in both the machines, I have same email configured, which will definitely create conflict as soon as I run. So it's better that you have different emails logged in, email account logged into your outlook. Uh, so mine is the same. That's why I'm not going to use email functionality here, but perfect. So once this is done, once you have used a uh, UiPath RE framework, and once you have created such workflow, all you need to do is simply click on this publish button. Now, what this publish button will do, this publish button will automatically, if you are connected to your orchestrator, it will give you option to upload this package to UiPath Orchestrator, correct? Now, package name, you can see here, you can see the version. I have already published it twice. You can see there is new version. If I click on publish, I'll have to give some release notes in order to understand what exactly is this. Is pre-release button, pre-release button is really important. If this workflow is not a final workflow, if it's a pre-release, then you can check this particular option. If it is not, simply check the release notes and then hit the next button. Okay. So don't worry about that, but you can simply click on publish. And once you click on publish, this workflow will be automatically published to our orchestrator, which is 1.0.3 version. So let me click. Okay. Let me navigate to orchestrator. Let's go to automations. In the automations, you can see the process has updated. Let me click here and say view process, how to give, go to the latest version. So you can click latest here, or you can click here and you say use. Now, once you say this as use, how do you know that you're using the latest version? Your button will change to green. You see the indicator here was blue color. Now it changed to green color. That means it is updated to the latest version. Okay. So. If you want to roll back in your orchestrator process, you can simply come here and you can click on roll back, which will navigate or which will automatically go back to the previous version. So if I say roll back and if I say, okay, you can see here, it is rolling back to the previous version and you can see the current name status in front of the version, which shows that this is the current package, which is being used. If I click on latest, it will jump and it will select the latest package. No matter what is the latest one that is in the, down the pipeline. So click on update here. So. I have selected the latest package, correct? Now, once this is done, let's go ahead and let us navigate to the second laptop that we have. Now we are here on our second laptop. So in the second machine, all you need to do is verify whether the application, which is UIDM application is in the similar kind of a folder structure that you have used in the previous workflow. Now, why is that is because we want to make sure that if this is in the similar folder structure, then only this application would open. This issue won't happen in case of a browser or any kind of a website automation, but this would happen in case of a windows automation. So remember that application path has to be same in both the machines. Otherwise it will conflict, right? Or you can create an asset for that also. If you want to defer the application for path for both of them. Now let's navigate to our UiPath assistant and let's try to see if we are connected to the same machine or not. So, uh, sorry, to the same environment or not. So let me open UiPath Assistant. So right now it's opening here, as you can see. Perfect. And as you can see, it is showing green. That means it is connected. Let me navigate to the orchestrator settings. And yes, it is connected. So you can see it is connected to cloud.uipath.com nissel 23 UiPath expert orchestrator. Okay. And uh, now we will move back to our machine one. So in the machine one, right now we are here in machine one. You can see here we have a UiPath assistant running. Let me open the UiPath assistant very quickly. So in the assistant, you can see this assistant is, I mean, this machine is also connected to uipath.com, nissel 23 uipath expert orchestrator. So both of the machines are connected to similar orchestrator. And now what all things you need to consider, remember, so both of the machines should be defined in the same tenant. So I have the same tenant, which is uipath expert. Both of the machines are defined in the same folder, which is default folder. Both of the machines 
are defined in a similar environment now why is that important is because your process which you define as part of automation uses environment as a reference point to execute so that is why both the robots that you create have to be in same environment and you see here there are two robots one is connected to this laptop which is laptop 1 another one is connected to laptop 2 uh both of have different users and the type of both of them is unattended and the environments of both of them is same now this is what matters the environment has to be same and both have to be enabled now without wasting time what i will do is i will simply run dispatcher one more time so have we we have a big chunk of data to run so that i can explain you very properly let's let me navigate to queue again so for earlier we had only 20 data transactions now let's see how many transactions we have so we have 40 transactions which are not processed now it would be fun to see how it completely executes for both the machines now let me start recording of my second laptop also so that we can have a look at that okay and now we have our both the laptops running uh so let's start the process without wasting time so what simply i have done what simply i'm going to do is look at this i'm going to select this orchestrator queue demo in from jobs or i can directly run it from here start a job okay so i'll say start a job automatically it selects process name as you can see on screen uh so this is machine one what i'm talking about and you see here below i have a specific robots i simply have to select all the robots and i have to say start so you can see in the jobs job has started on machine 1 and you can also see on the machine 2 job has triggered on both the machine job has triggered but on machine 1 it has automatically already logged into ui demo application and it has already processed two of the transactions let's look at the machine 2 what machine 2 is doing so you can see here machine 2 also job has triggered here but bot has not yet started now bot has started as you can see so it is a bit delayed but now ui demo application is running and bot is bot has started processing the transactions okay rather on machine one we might already have a lead because it has already processed couple of transactions okay and in machine 2 also we are getting some of the transactions being processed so this is machine 2 right now we are talking about and machine 2 is processing some of the data at the same time machine 1 is also processing some of the data and both of them will have different logs all together but both of them are working on a single queue how do we know that we will see right after this execution so let's again jump back to our machine 1 as you can see on screen machine 1 is processing data faster right a little bit faster because the configuration of the machine 1 is faster now why i showed this use case intentionally is because in case if you have certain scenario where you want to run a single queue in two machines right parallelly then i would not recommend that uh you know split the queue and run two queues separately or split the data and run two data now you can see here the execution has completed so let us jump back on our machine one and let's have a look at what we have here so on the machine one we can see job have successfully completed both of them completed at the same time almost 2 minutes ago before we jump on jobs log let's go to queues so we go to queues in the demo queue refresh this one okay and let's go to view transactions in the view transaction you can see bot has successfully processed all 40 of them okay so how do you know let's look at the status new is there any new pending there is no new and if you look at the status successful you can see all of them literally 40 all of them are successful correct now you can also see here cyberpunk mr robot cyberpunk mr robot so the robots so literally each and every alternative transaction has been executed by this both robots you know one by one you can see here now couple of times cyberpunk has advantage over mr robot so maybe it started a little early now let's look at the robot so cyberpunk which is this laptop one machine one have processed 25 transactions which is wonderful and the second laptop which is mr robot have completed 
15 transactions because we have total overall we had 40 transactions so isn't this wonderful that we did not have to wait for the slower machine which is machine 2 to complete all the transactions because in case if we would have split the data using a reference property for example and if we would have said let's say reference for machine 1 so machine 1 should run only those transactions which has reference 1 and machine 2 should run only those transactions which have machine reference 2 in that case what would have happened that machine 1 would have completed all the transactions and would have sit idle for a couple of minutes while machine 2 would be still processing the data if we would have split it in 2020 but what happened here while machine 1 was faster machine 1 also managed to pick some of the extra transactions from the plate of machine 2 in order to complete the data within time what happened here is the the total time of execution reduced down and both the robots completed the transactions at same time with very less amount of time taken no matter what bot runs faster bot will automatically pick up the next transaction if it is available or if it is if its status is new so right now you saw that let's navigate to again back to automation let's navigate to jobs here we just executed three minutes ago so open this one cyberpunk first of all let's, let's say view logs so you can see here so uh, there are no logs right now okay uh, no logs is pasted here there's no information which is pasted here in the logs section so maybe there are no logs captured and in this one which is mr robot let's look at the logs so there are a couple of logs here okay which you can see uh, so there are total 79 logs now what happened here why there are no logs in case of the cyberpunk robot why there are no logs here okay and why there are only logs available for the mr robot so this also i wanted to explain how this happened so cyberpunk is the machine which is machine one what i did let's navigate to robot section what i did is cyberpunk robot if you come here and if you see edit the robot if you navigate to settings i have set the logging level of this robot to error so this log this robot will log the log messages only which has priority error and above that so error critical and off only those types of logs will be published or will be saved in orchestrator by cyberpunk robot and that is why in the automation in this job section we do not have any kind of logs for the cyberpunk robot while while let's navigate to robots again while for mr robot there is no such set information the logging level is set to information and that is why it is showing and saving all the logs so how you can now generate and how you can extract those logs simply navigate to the automation jobs navigate to the logs of the machine which is which you which you want to extract click on this export button it will automatically download a csv file so just simply click on download and then open this logs you can see it's in a csv format where you can see all the logs that you want to see along with the data right isn't this wonderful so you can see here all the logs are stored here if each and every log is stored where you can also see account number and transaction number extracted so there are how many logs there are total over 80 logs which are stored here right or 79 logs we can say excluding the header which are stored in this particular excel and you can now share the csv file with your management so this is how you exactly can go ahead and run uh, two jobs parallelly on two different machines remember two robots can run parallelly but on two different machines not on the same machine and that we achieved uh, by fetching data of transactions from a single queue so right now you have seen the entire example. I hope you love this video and I hope it clarifies your doubts about UiPath Orchestrator queue and also the logs and the jobs panel. Thank you so much for watching this video and uh, I hope it helps you. Happy automation.